Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to access and change fuses on a Toyota Yaris Echo or Vitz. This is a 2001 model, so it's the first generation. So there are some fuses under the hood in this box as well. In this box, you'll notice the battery has been disconnected. I'm going to take it out and show you after how to open this one. Um, I'll show you, give you the link as well to how to take off the battery. For this box, all you have to do is press this tab, bring it forward and open it. And there you have different fuses. And there are the corresponding numbers on there. And you'll have what they correspond to in the, in the owner's manual. So to take them out, obviously you're not going to be able to do this with your fingers unless you have really, really small fingers. So there's a little sort of plier here, more like a tweezer, and you can just press on it and pull them out. You see that little metal arch in there? If it's melted, if it doesn't make an arch like that, that means your f fuse is blown. So then you'll have to replace it. There are some spare ones usually on the side here. Once you've taken your new one, you can put it back in by hand. It doesn't matter which side. For the, these ones, these are, I think they're called Japanese fuses. You might be able to take them off by hand, but the easier thing is to take some thin pliers like that. Don't press too hard. But you can take them out like this. And same thing with these ones, you can see a little metal thing crossing the top. If that one has been uh, blown, it will be melted and not make that connection. Uh, I don't think you'll have some spare ones in, in your car of these. They don't usually blow, but, and they might be a bit hard to find, but you can change them easily if you buy them on internet for example or in a specialist shop so once you're done you put the little tweezer back in there and close it up hook up this part first and just put it into place now there are other fuses inside I'm gonna take back that little thing because in there there isn't one and this fuse box is Underneath the steering wheel, uh, this is a, a French car, so steering is on the left. Just pull that handle towards you, opens up the fuse box, and uh, the access is not great, but you can still manage to take off the fuses with this little tweezer. Exactly the same thing to check if they're good or not. And on the back of the cover, there are also what they correspond to with the corresponding amps. Once you're done, same, there are also three big fuses 50, 30, and 40 amps. Once you're done, just put the cover back on bottom first. And pop it back in place. So they are the all the inside electrical uh, devices. So if your ventilation or your gauges don't work, it's probably going to come from there. If you don't have the standard stereo, there there is probably a fuse behind your stereo. So if only that doesn't work you'll have to take it out and check the fuse on the back of that. There will be a small fuse like, like this one, the same one you have usually. Uh, probably not a 15 one, so depends on your, on your stereo, but it will be behind there, so you'll have to take that out. Put this back, because you'll need it for future fuse change. Now we're gonna look at what's inside this one so this is another few fuse box the main fuse box you have a, a couple of 60 amps fuse and one 120 amp that's the one that that I blow blue uh, how did I do that it was 
morning, early morning, not very bright, um, cold, minus six, the battery was dirty, I didn't, I put it back in the car, I didn't really see the minus and the plus sign, put it the wrong way around, I put, connected the plus, and then when I went to touch with the minus, big spark, and uh, nothing else worked in the car apart from starting the engine and the headlights were on, but that were the only things were general problem where nothing in the car works apart from starting the engine it's there's a big chance that it's the main fuse blown in there I think it's also called, called the alternator fuse and uh, of course it's a protection so if you inverse the connections it's gonna protect the rest of your electrical devices on the car so take off the battery and then it will be easier to open up that box because I'm, I'm this way we won't have much uh, space to work on it. With the battery removed we have much more space to work on this. There are a couple of tabs you'll have to lift, one here and one there, which I have already lifted. So I'm just going to bring this one up with a flat head screwdriver. And then you can open up the fuse box like that. Alright, so there was my, there was a 120 amp fuse here, there's a couple of 60 amps one there, this one is a spare spot. Um, yeah, so they look like that, if that uh, grey part is blown, melted, it won't make contact between the two, and uh, your fuse is blown. So then just unscrew this with a crosshead screwdriver, or... Um, 10 millimeter socket and you'll be able to just change the fuse. Here in France I wasn't able to find the uh, right fuse, 120 amps, with exactly that look. I had to take this, even at, in a Toyota garage they didn't have it, so I took 100 amp fuse, I hope it will be okay, it won't blow right away. Uh, don't take higher, except maybe 125 it's a bit easy to find but don't put like a 150 amp fuse because this is a protection device so if you put too much then more electricity is going to go through before it blows and you can damage quite a lot of things so it's better to put a little less try if it doesn't blow then keep going with that until you find the, the exact one replacement one so now I hope I'll be able to fit this through the screws Otherwise, I'm going to have to find a spare one on the internet probably because no one seems to have them. <laughs> uh, I just checked the screw doesn't go through this gap, but it does fit right underneath the top. So I should be able to put it in place like that. So I got it back in. It is a little bit warped, but it should do it, its job anyways I don't have a choice so I'm gonna try that and see if it works out so once you've changed that pop that box back on top first and click it back on so what I'm gonna do first is connect the battery before I put this brace back on because if it doesn't if the fuse blows right away, I'll have to take off the battery again, so now just make sure you don't make the same mistake as I did. The plus on the plus, and if it's too dark, bring a light with you. If you're too tired, <laughs> don't do it. But yeah, just be very careful because it's a, a little mistake. Well, there are fuses for that, so that's not really a big deal, but... It's always a, a loss of time and a bit of a hassle to have to do that when you're in a rush. Alright, so now, moment of truth. Well, central locking works, so that's a, already a good thing. It didn't, with the blown fuse. Yes, all the lights are on. The ventilation works. And here she goes. 
So good news. Knowing that I have 100 amps in and uh, the fuse is supposed to be 120, I am going to be uh, a bit careful with what I use in the car. But th since this one doesn't have aircon already, that's something that's not going to need too much electricity. So I should be fine. But if you had that problem, a low amp fuse, try and not use your stereo too loud and all the heating to the maximum ventilation lights on and any other device that may use a lot of electricity so as you can see anyone can do that changing a fuse is really easy and whenever you have a problem in your car always start by the fuses it's the cheapest fix and very often it's the first thing that goes wrong so if your any appliance has a problem start by there well, I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them under the video. And I'll see you next time in another tutorial. Don't forget to put the brace back on the battery. Close this cover. And you're good to go. Alright, cheers. See you next time.